It is my honor to preach today for the Reformers Unanimous Conference. I am so thankful to the Lord for this ministry. I love Brother Kingsbury. I consider Brother Kingsbury to be one of the great men of compassion of our generation. I thank God for his vision for the local church there at North Love to share their pastor and this vision to reach America and to touch the world uh, with this ministry has been such a tremendous blessing for me to observe. And then Brother Burks, I thank God for your daily administration, for the love that you show for those who have such great need. And I am privileged and honored to have a small part today in this conference. And it is my prayer that God will richly bless you and bless this meeting for His honor and for His glory. I would like to speak to you today on the subject, out of bondage. Out of bondage. And I would ask you to turn with me in the Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10. I bring you greetings today from the Lancaster Baptist Church and West Coast Baptist College. We are here in the COVID situation in California. We need a lot of prayer and a lot of wisdom as we truly desire to be faithful and filled with faith during this season. And I'm thankful to report last Sunday we had 10 baptized and several saved. And uh, while we're slowly coming back and many uh, onerous uh, challenges around us, nevertheless, God is faithful. Also, as you're turning to Exodus chapter 10, allow me the liberty to share with you something that has just been completed today and printed. It's a new book that we have published entitled, Keep the Faith, Standing for Biblical Truth, Discerning Ministry Trends, and Reaching Forward with the Gospel. And this is a book that I have spent 10 years writing. It is a study of the current trends of theology and methodology in churches across America. Many people see change, but they don't understand the insidious roots beneath the change, and they don't understand the philosophies of certain authors and uh, various ministries that are moving away from the true gospel. They talk about uh, the ministry and the gospel, but oftentimes moving away. And this is a book that will outline for you some of those trends and give you an ability to identify uh, biblically uh, how to stand and how to keep the faith. And so it's available at Striving Together Publications, and uh, it's something I'm passionate about. I want every pastor and Christian leader to have a copy. Let me encourage you to get one, Keep the Faith, and you can find that at Striving Together Publications. Well, as we get started today, I want to say I'm thrilled uh, that we have the opportunity to serve a Savior who calls us out of bondage and into fellowship. And so let me take a moment to read to you from Exodus chapter 10 and verse number 8. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh and said unto them, Go serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And he said, let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones look to it for evil is before you. Not so go now ye that are men and serve the Lord for ye did desire that, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. I want you to consider with me the great responsibility of Moses to go before Pharaoh and to be the mouthpiece of God, a man that hitherto had a lack of faith, a man that uh, struggled to speak, and yet he comes before the most powerful man in the world, and he says, let my people go. This is the responsibility of the preachers today and the workers and reformers unanimous today, that we are to go with the message of God to say, let my people go. We believe that the gospel will deliver men and women from the grip of Satan, from the grip of drugs, from the grip of addiction, 
and will bring them out of bondage and into freedom. And that was the mission of Moses, to lead the people of God out of Egypt, a land that is an identification with sin even till this day, a land of bondage, a land of slavery, and that they were to be brought out to worship God. And at first, Moses is simply asking that they could come out three days journey for the purpose of worshiping God. The Bible says in Psalm 78 and verse 4, We will not hide them from their children, showing to our generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. This was the heart of Moses, to take the children of God out into the wilderness where they might worship and praise God. For 400 years they had been in this bondage. But God had heard their cry. And aren't you glad that He hears our cry? Aren't you thankful that we have a God who cares for our soul? Well, Egypt, of course, is a type of the world. There were many abominations, much idolatry. God wanted His people to come out and to sacrifice. And by the way, God always requires separation for His people. He does not save us so that we would stay in a place of sin and complacency, but he calls us out. The very nature of the church, your local church, is a called out assembly. And God wants to sanctify his people, to set them apart, and to put their feet upon the rock and establish their goings. Exodus chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 3, The God of the Hebrews hath met with, me, with us and said, Let us go, we pray thee three days' journey, into the desert. And so this was the message of Moses. Let my people go. Let them go out into the desert where they might worship. This was God's desire. He wanted fellowship with them. Well, we see that Satan is never easy to give up. And we're going to see that in the person of Pharaoh today. The Bible tells us that Pharaoh begins to offer a series of compromises to Moses. Instead of letting them completely go and worship God, Pharaoh begins to say, let's make a deal. And by the way, that's Satan's favorite game. Let's make a deal. Satan will let you maybe go a little ways for God, but always want you to keep your old friends. Always want you to keep a few of those things that would identify you to the old crowd in the old way. But God says, no, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And Touch not the unclean thing. This is the message of God. The Bible tells us here in Exodus chapter 10 that Pharaoh is up to his old tricks. In verse 3, uh, the Bible says, How long will you go? And, and Moses said, Let my people go uh, that they may serve me. And, and he says, We want to go three days' journey. And I want you to see the compromise that Pharaoh is going to offer. First, he's going to say, you don't need to go three days journey. You don't need to go out that far. This is his first attempt to keep them in close here uh, in the book of Exodus chapter number 10. A.W. Tozer once said, The blessing of God is promised to the peacemaker, but the religious negotiator had better watch his step. Darkness and light can never be brought together to talk. Some things are not negotiable. May I remind you today, don't negotiate with Pharaoh. Don't negotiate with Satan. Don't put yourself into a situation where you're uh, kind of thinking of leaving a, a one foot in the world and one foot for God. The compromise of Pharaoh, first of all, was that he would deny them the ability to worship. He discouraged them from going out that three days journey. You see, in Exodus 20, we find the commandments of God. And the Bible is very clear. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He said, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Our God is a jealous God. Our God is a worthy God. He is worthy of our worship and of our attention. But Pharaoh said, don't go out the three days journey. How, how long does God want you to go? How much do you have to go to church? Can't you just have a drink now and then? I mean, do you have to go three days journey? How about one day's journey, Satan would say 
But don't be so separated. Don't be down at the church all the time. Years ago, I led a man to the Lord. His name was Mark, and he and his wife were wonderfully saved. Remember when Mark came forward, it was the first time that I really saw someone uh, in church uh, still undergoing some of the withdrawals from drugs. He had a terrible cocaine habit, and and uh, as I observed him, I could see some nervous twitching and touching and uh, various actions that showed me there was an underlying issue. I did not know the issue. He certainly had a mental consciousness. He understood the scriptures and he prayed and accepted Christ as his Savior and was gloriously saved. And uh, yet, uh, as uh, this man began to develop and grow in his Christian faith, I remember telling him one time, uh, I said, why don't you take where you used to put your drugs and in that pocket, put a New Testament. And every time you feel a little urging or a problem developing, just take out the Bible and we'd underline some verses. One day he came to church and as he came into church, boy, he had a black eye and uh, looked like he'd just been run through the mill. And I said to him, I said, what in the world happened? He said, well, when my friends realized that I was really going to go all the way for Jesus. They took me out back of our workplace and worked me over and, and beat me up simply because I wouldn't party with them once again. Sometimes there is a price to be paid. The devil's crowd always wants you to come back. They'll let you do a little bit of the church thing, but they don't want you completely out of bondage. And here we see that Pharaoh was continuously asking in Exodus 5 through 10, how many days and do you have to go three days? The next thing that Pharaoh did, besides trying to deny them this, this opportunity to go out, the next thing that we see him doing is trying to bring division amongst the family. You see, he doesn't want uh, a wife to forgive a husband or a husband to forgive a wife. He doesn't want a child to forgive a father or a father, a child. Notice if you would in chapter 10, what we read a moment ago in verse 7, Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, and that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not that Egypt is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh and said, Go serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? And they said, We'll go with our young and with our old. And they said, Not Verse 11, not so, go now ye that are men and serve the Lord. Here we see one of Satan's favorite tricks. Satan would say, all right, you can take some of your family, let them be on fire for God, but let the young people still stay back. Let them still have their ways. Let them play their computer games and let them have their fun. They don't need to get all sold out for God. And many times when we're coming out of bondage, Satan will either in the first place try to get us not to come all the way for God, or in the second place, he'll try to divide the family. He'll try to bring some division. And Pharaoh said, I don't want you to let, uh, let the whole family go. The men can go, but I don't want the children to go. And let me just encourage you. You might be listening to me right now, and you have a loved one that's been uh, repentant and they're dealing with sin, or maybe you're an RU worker and you're dealing with someone. And there may be someone that's coming along in the faith, and, and sometimes there'll be a teacher, a pastor, or even a family member, and they'll say, well, we'll see what happens. And they become so skeptical. And it's as if uh, there comes a division. Let me just encourage you to bring the balm of Gilead. Let me encourage you to be the one that says, you know what, I want to rejoice with you. And, uh, and let me encourage you to give grace and forgiveness to someone that is reaching out to Jesus and they're repentant of their sin and wanting to live for God. Don't be the one that says, well, you go on your way and we'll see how this is going to work. You see, Pharaoh wants to divide you right now, but Satan wants you to come together and strive together uh, in this matter of the gospel life and living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I see here the compromises of Pharaoh. Whenever someone's trying to come out and live for God, Satan's going to try to pull you back. 
He's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to divide your family. He's going to try to get you to go to church on Sunday, but not Wednesday. Or go to the group on Friday, but not Sunday. Let me just encourage you. If you're going to live for Jesus, live for him all the way. Because there's no other way. I love the song, Trust and Obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. I see the compromise of Satan. But I also see here the conviction of Moses. I see that Moses is a man that just won't stop following his convictions. He keeps following the word of God. If you have your Bible there, turn to chapter 4. And I want you to notice in chapter 4, verse number 21, what the Bible says. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Moses had his orders. And if you're an RU worker, a pastor, a teacher, we have our orders. And we're to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And Moses was on this same mission to go out and deliver those who were held captive. And Moses never compromised on this calling. He kept going relentlessly to Pharaoh and and calling the people out. The Bible tells us in chapter 10 and verse number 12, the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locust that they may come up upon the land of Egypt. And as the plagues came, Moses followed through each and every time being faithful to do the work that God had given to him. A number of years ago, a great preacher went to a concert and uh, he wanted to hear Uh, the beautiful music in the auditorium. A friend was sitting nearby and looked out over the vast crowd in the hall. And he said to the pastor, he said, when will we see this hall filled to capacity for a Christian service? The pastor pointed to the members of the orchestra playing on the stage. And he said, when we can see 80 men willing to give absolute obedience to the will of Christ, as these have given to the conductor. Let me encourage you, my friend, give absolute obedience to Christ. We're not going to see people come out of bondage unless all of us as workers and leaders are going out soul winning and visiting those that we know have broken hearts and being faithful time and again and to call them out and through the difficult seasons and for for, for Moses, the plagues and all of these things, Moses simply did what God had called him to do. Oh, the Bible commands us, forsake not the assembling as the manner of some is and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you to become fishers of men. The Bible says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Amen. Last Thursday, my wife and I were out door knocking, 34 years into it here at Lancaster Baptist Church, and yet out to another street with another pocket of tracks in the middle of COVID and the fears of it all. But we must stay faithful to spread the gospel message. And this is what I see in the life of Moses. I see a man with conviction to continue to help people getting out of bondage and coming to know Jesus Christ. He followed the word of the Lord. And he followed with the children of the Lord. I want you to see that. The Bible tells us here in our text today, verse number 11, Moses is told, why don't you just go with the men and serve the Lord? Why don't you just go with the men? But Moses said, no, I'm going to go out with all of the family, men and women, boys and girls. And it's a blessing to see families come back to God. You know, one of the greatest joys when someone comes off the drugs and starts to get faithful, especially if they have a family, is to think that maybe the next generation has a chance. 
Maybe a family now can be restored and break the trends of alcoholism or addiction that has plagued them for many generations. Oh, never forget the Bible says in Psalm 127, children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Oh, listen, friend, it's a privilege to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and and to see him work in the heart uh, of those whose lives have been changed uh, and have been brought back to the place where God is dealing with them. Follow the word of the Lord. Follow with your family. Don't leave them behind. Follow the Lord with a spirit of sacrifice. It may not always be easy standing up for the Lord, going out soul winning, getting to the meetings for are you. But may I remind you that Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Jesus said, no man that putteth his hand to the plow looketh back. Make sure that you're following the Lord sacrificially. Look at our text here today. Verse number 24, the Bible says, And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not an hoof be left behind, for thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come hither. In other words, Moses said, If I'm going to follow God, I'm going to follow him lock, stock, and barrel. And we're going to go out into that desert and we're going all the way. I remember one time I had led a man to Christ and I was beginning to disciple him. And uh, it was a blessing to see his life uh, getting changed, lived maybe about five miles from us. A dear man, God was working in his heart. One day he asked me if I'd go fishing with him. And I Really hadn't thought about fishing for a while. And uh, he had a place he said was really good. He wanted me to go. So we cleared some time and uh, he was uh, saved and uh, began to really grow, was coming out of a life of addiction. And uh, a professional man, you would have never known that he had that problem. And, and uh, yet uh, he had confided in some things to me about his habits. And so we had prayed. And I'll never forget that day. We, uh, we were out there fishing and and uh, he opened up his tackle box. He said, he said, Pastor, really, the reason I wanted you to come with me, I wanted you to see in my tackle box. And I thought, well, he could have showed me his tackle box from his living room or something. And he opened up that tackle box. And I'll tell you, there was every kind of a pill in there and all kinds of marijuana in there and, and uh, various different uh, substances. And he said, Pastor, this is where I've hid it all these years in my tackle box in the garage. And he said, I knew there'd come a day I'd have to get rid. He said, there's hundreds of dollars worth of drugs in this tackle box. But he said, I wanted you to be with me. He opened all that tackle box up and threw it out there in that river. I've often wondered to myself, I wonder what happened to the fish that saw those pills and thought they were salmon eggs and and, uh, maybe some crazy fish out there. I do not know. But I was so glad to see him essentially saying this. If I'm going to follow God, I'm going to follow him all the way. And I want you to testify to that fact. You see, uh, Moses said, if we're going to come out of bondage, if we're going to follow God, we're going to bring our family. We're going to bring our children. We're going to bring our animals. It all belongs to God. Not some of it, but all of me belongs to God. And he was willing to sacrifice uh, whatever sacrifices had to be made in order to honor God with his life. I see this this day uh, a compromise from Satan. Hey, why don't you go a little ways, but not all the way. Go with some of your family, but not all your family. Go with some of your stuff, but not all your stuff. But even as Satan offers you those compromises, I see the conviction of Moses to say, no, let's go all the way. Let's go all the way. And some of you ought to stop right now and thank God for your pastor. Thank God for your RU worker. Thank God for a husband or a wife, whoever it is that's saying to you, don't go part way, but let's go all the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is worthy. And I'm here to tell you today that Jesus did not go part way for you. 
Oh, he went all the way up Golgotha's hill. They took his hands and placed nails through his hands and through his feet and the spear through his side and the blood came down and he didn't swoon or fake a death, but he died that day a death, a bloody sacrifice on the cross. He arose again three days later. Oh, listen, friend, he descended into the lower parts and declared victory over the demons. He ascended up into heaven where the blood yet speaketh for us today. And he came back to this earth and showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Jesus Christ did not go part way. He went all the way for you. And that's how we ought to go for him. All the way, my Savior leads me. All the way. I see the compromise of the devil. I see the conviction of Moses. And as you follow this story on out, we'll not take all the time today, but you'll see the conquest of the land. You'll see ultimately after the uh, wandering about the 40-year period, there came a day in the life of Joshua when God fully delivered these people into the land. He blessed them. And oh, it was a wonderful time. And I want to close with this thought. You know, in Joshua chapter 3, as they were getting ready finally to go into the land, into the promised land, there's a wonderful verse there. Joshua says, in Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5, Joshua, this replacement of Moses, this man that had been the assistant, the assistant pastor, whatever you want to call him. Now the Bible says in Joshua 1, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, lead these people into the promised land. And in Joshua chapter 3 and verse 3, Joshua said this, listen to it. He said to the people, these people that had been wandering around, he said, sanctify yourselves because tomorrow... The Lord will do wonders among you. There it is again. God will never bless a people who are partly surrendered. We must be sanctified. Uh, we must be consecrated. Hebrews 10 and 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. God says, if you're going to be blessed, you've got to be a consecrated people. Oh yes, we've been consecrated by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're sanctified. We're set apart. We have a standing before God, but there is a practical and continual consecration. And we as believers must understand that God is calling us to go with him all the way. You know, there in Joshua chapter three, as they went across into the promised land, God said to the priest, I want you to go first. And I want you to lift up the Ark of the covenant. The Ark of the covenant is a type of Jesus Christ. Inside of it, we know is the tablet of the law, Aaron's rod that budded, a picture of the resurrected Christ. On the top of that ark, we know there was the mercy seat where the blood was shed. And so Joshua said, I want you to follow that ark. And I want to just remind you, friend, as you come out from bondage, follow the ark. That is, follow Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Friends will disappoint you. Friends will, dislead, uh, will dismay you. But Jesus Christ will never disappoint you. The way out of bondage is to keep your eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what a tremendous blessing to see in our text today that yes, it was a terrible 400 years of bondage, beatings and difficulties and cruel taskmasters and Satan and drugs and alcohol and other things are cruel taskmasters. But thank God for a man named Moses who came and said, let my people go. Thank God for the RU ministry that's going into cities around the world and saying, let these people go in the name of Jesus Christ. There is deliverance to be found. And if you'll lift your eyes up off of these worldly things and turn them on to Jesus Christ, you'll find deliverance and freedom and joy and keep on following him and he'll lead you out of bondage and into the promised land. Keep your eyes on the ark, the ark of the covenant. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no greater way to live your life than to live your life out of bondage and serving the one who loves you, Jesus Christ, our Savior. May God help us to be a people leading others out of bondage, living a life out of bondage, knowing the freedom and the joy of Jesus Christ. For when you know the truth, you can know the liberty and the freedom that comes with the truth of the gospel 
of Jesus Christ. May God bless you as you live out of bondage and as you lead others out of bondage in this needy hour. Thank you for allowing me to share these moments with you.